Hey guys, we are live and I'm excited to be here because I have a wham bam, thank you ma'am, very quick but very powerful training for you so that you know exactly how to hire the right designer for your project. And we're gonna jump right into it, okay guys? So over the past couple of years, I have talked with probably hundreds, and that's not an exaggeration of either clients or potential clients um, in person or virtually through Clarity Calls. And I have learned a couple things about how to figure out if someone is the right fit for your project, because not only have I served clients in a design capacity, but I've also hired people to support me in a design capacity. So there are a number of questions that i believe are very important for you to get clarity around in order to find somebody who's going to be the best designer for your project okay so the number one thing that we need to know is understanding what we need for our design project so um, last week we talked about 10 questions to ask yourself which starts as the foundation of today's training understanding what we need getting clarity on who we're serving, why we're serving them, and the, the number one thing that we wanna put out there first, okay guys? So when we understand what we need, for example, do I need a new brand? Do I need a refresh on my logo? Do I need a website? Do I need brand assets or collateral items, things like an email signature or maybe a PDF or a workbook? Um, maybe it's an email template for your email newsletter. Do you need um, brain strategy on top of the design stuff? Um, or are you looking for someone to help coach you in your business to help you know how to use your brand and build it out, build that brand trust? So knowing what you need when you're going in to hire a designer is really going to help you make the best decision. I don't believe that hiring a designer should be a whim. It should be a, an intentional and thoughtful process. And so once you understand what you need for your business to move it forward, then you can start the search. And this is the fun part. So to begin researching, um, the number one thing I do personally is I ask people, who have you used? Who have you worked with? Um, and ask people whose opinion you trust. Um, and so that's one of the best ways my clients come to me. The number one way I, I get business is through word of mouth referrals. And that is a get the highest honor that you can give somebody that you've worked with is referring them um, and being honest about what you think of their services, whether it's good or bad, right? So even if I get some, some constructive feedback, it's like, okay, that didn't work the way we wanted it to. How do we improve upon it, right? So even constructive feedback is not negative feedback. Um, you can ask for recommendations. So there's a lot of community groups. I have one. It's called the Legacy Driven Entrepreneur. And you can go into places like that. There's Rising Tide Society. Um, there's all kinds of business-based Facebook groups, um, or there's um, places on Instagram that you can go look on. Um, you can look on Pinterest for research. But if you're looking for a recommendation, I would first lean into Facebook groups and say, hey guys, who have you used? Who do you recommend? And I'm telling you, the thread will just fill up. It's crazy. And so then you have an overabundance of options. But what you can do next is go and look at their social media. See if you can find some of their work on Pinterest. Um, see if you can find some of their work on Instagram. Um, then you can also look at websites that you personally love. So a lot of times at the bottom of a website, there will be footer attribution, um, or it says like site credit. Um, so click on that and it will take you to the person who designed the website. And you can look at the rest of their work. Typically they'll have a portfolio of other types of work that they've done. And then again, you can just, I would say Google on Pinterest, but Pinterest is a search engine. So you can go on and say Squarespace website designer or um, trifold brochure design or designers. And then you can find some resources there and click through until you find the person who found it. And so once you get an idea or you found a couple people who you've liked, and again, I really recommend first and foremost, um, word of mouth referrals or Facebook group. Um, queries, then you can find your favorites and go look at their personal social media and their website and their portfolio. And then when you're looking at 
their stuff. I mean, this is just like really fun internet stalking at its best, right? Like we're just looking at all their things and you can read their blog. You can look at their portfolio. You can read their about page, um, see if they have any testimonials, look at their clients work, spend some time doing this process. Um, so some things to ask yourself while you're doing this, we're not just doing this just to be stalkers, right? We're, we're doing some investigative research and saying, is what I want reflected in any of the work that they have already done? This doesn't mean that they can't do it, but a lot of times designers have a certain style or a certain strength that they're gonna lean into. So is that style that I'm looking for reflected in their work? Is it moody and dark and soulful or is it bright and cheerful and maybe even like obnoxiously happy? Like what are we looking for and is that reflected in any of the work that they've already done? Um, do they offer all the design things that I need? So some people might just be illustrators and they do no website, right? They do illustrations or they do graphic design, but they have no experience on the web. They have no experience with apps on the phone. They have no experience with user experience or user interface. They have no experience with coding. And so if you are looking for something bigger than just um, graphic design development, then you need to see if they offer all the things that you need for your business. Best case scenario, someone is a one-stop shop for you, but if you really, really, really love a certain type of work that someone does with their photography or their illustration or their graphic design, you can by all means work with one person for one thing and work with another for something else. Do they seem knowledgeable about what they do? Um, do they, do they seem like they're totally new? And if they are, that's okay. Everybody starts somewhere, but do they have some knowledge and experience under their belt or do they feel able to be able to communicate clearly at least about what they do, um, and how they do it? Um, can you afford the investment, right? So being able to afford the investment isn't necessarily a no. It might mean I have to wait to work with this person. If I really want this caliber of design, then I might need to wait to work with them or I need to save up. To work with them and then lastly and this is really important do i see potential for connection right are we going to click with chemistry so once you have gotten some referrals you've asked some facebook groups you've done a little bit of intentional thoughtful stalking um, then the next step is to schedule a call and i recommend scheduling a call with a couple of different designers getting a feel for the different interactions and most designers like myself offer a, a free design strategy call, a clarity call, a discovery call, whatever you wanna call it, um, to figure out whether or not the potential client relationship is a good fit or not. And these calls will typically last about 20, maybe 30 minutes. Um, and this is an opportunity for you to get to know them and for them to get to know your needs and ask any questions and, and figure out if you guys are a good fit to serve each other. And um, some questions that a designer will typically cover in those calls is um, what exactly is included in the package that you're interested in. Um, they will talk about turnaround time. So is it a six month experience or is it a six week experience? And, and how long should you prepare, be prepared for the process to take? What is the designing process like? Is it highly collaborative? Is there a lot of dialogue back and forth? Or is it a, this is what I want, and we go over here and work, and then we come back and we deliver? Right. So some people work different ways. And it's you got to figure out, am I a collaborative person? Am I, am I going to have a lot of opinions and input here or am I just going to hand it off and be totally hands off? You can also talk about the investment if payment plans are an option and how payments are made. And um, you can ask them if they've worked with your particular industry or not before. Some designers have a niche in an industry. Um, for example, some people. Um, work just in the car industry and they do all of the promo posters for all of the different car companies out there um, and or maybe they're in the wedding industry or maybe they're in the real estate industry and they just know what works in those industries so they're gonna have a lot of insight there but other people don't need that um, experience for someone to have experience in their industry and that that doesn't matter they're gonna lean on your expertise to tell them what your audience needs and then um, it's also fun to do a little bit of get to know you stuff. Not every designer is very personable. They're just there to do the design work that they love and get done. But 
for me, I like to get to know my clients on a little bit more of a personal level, and that gives me insight into something that they're really going to love, um, that they're really going to get excited about sharing. So these are some questions that will come up in a discovery call or um, a clarity call, consultation call. And then um, the next step is to consider the chemistry. So after you've done a couple of those calls, you can say, who did I click best with? Or did I click with anybody? Um, the person whether you click with them or not, there's someone that you need to be comfortable communicating with. And so if you don't feel like you're able to communicate with them, then you need to keep looking. Um, if you are trying to decide like between a couple people, some other questions I would ask myself is like, does this person seem excited about my project? Are they excited to work with me? Um, are they going to be able to give me insight on things outside of the design? Like, for example, if I need some branding strategy on top of the actual brand development, is that person going to be able to help me with that? So um, there might just be um, like, uh, let me see, let me catch my thoughts here. It could just be that you need to get a design asset done and it's just a one off and you need to knock it out. And that is OK. Um, but the ideal, when you're looking for the best fit and the best designer for your project, you're going to be a little bit more thoughtful and intentional about these things. Um, and then lastly, um, follow up, right? Follow up if we're professionals and trying to interact in a professional manner. Um, it doesn't matter what industry and follow up is key. Um, that is going to open so many doors for you, whether you're hiring or you are trying to be hired, follow-up is that human connection that people are looking for. Whether or not you decide to move forward with somebody, saying, hey, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for meeting with me. Thank you so much for the insights you shared on the call. Um, I've actually, after a lot of careful consideration, have decided to go in a different direction, or I've decided to wait and save up to work with you. Um, or I'm just not sure that this is the right fit for this time. And saying that allows us to shift focus as someone who's trying to be hired, then that allows us to shift our interest elsewhere or shift our energy elsewhere. And same for you. You know, having all of these loose ends is never a good thing in our business and it's just good practice to follow up with people. Um, and that will do a lot of good things for reputation, which impacts word of mouth referrals and other people just wanting to work with you in a general capacity. So just making sure that you follow up and saying like, yes, I'm interested, but I need to wait a little while, or I'm, I'm not sure that I'm interested in this particular package. Thank you. Um, is the last tip for how to hire the best designer for your project. And so, um, I do have availability. I do have, um, room on my calendar for clarity and client calls. And so this summer I'm holding up just a couple spaces for some more big brand and design projects. So if that is you and you want to even just experience, what is this like to jump on a consultation call? What is it like to talk with Brittany and figure out how does it feel to ask these questions? And um, cause it can be uncomfortable for some people to, when they're, they're moving into entrepreneurship, they're trying to figure out who do I hire first? Um, what do I need the, the, a designer can also help you a good designer can help you figure out what you need as well so if that is you I'm gonna drop my book a call link here as well so that is it for today thank you guys so much for joining me oh my goodness there are a lot of people who joined this morning um, I think it's dice dicey icy um, and Reciprocal Restoration, Kelly, Lori Kelly, Tawan, Emergent Power. Thank you guys for joining me this morning. And Sarah, thank you so much for joining me this morning. So that's it for today. I hope that, that you find this helpful. If you do, please drop some comments be below and let me know what things were most helpful for you. And if you do have other questions about how to hire a designer or what to look for in a designer, then please drop those things below as well. I see that. I see you, Tawan. All right. That's it for today. You guys have a great and productive rest of your week, and we'll see you around here again next week. Bye, guys.